So uh, we're working on a 16 by 20 canvas and I'm just adding some white gesso now and then I'm starting to just introduce a little bit of dioxazine purple and a little bit of burnt umber uh, here at the bottom. At the top I'm just using um, a nice gold color I've mixed with phthalo yellow and phthalo orange um, to just kind of create a nice uh, little transition here. This is a commission painting. Um, the, the client uh, had a loved one that served in the Coast Guard and uh, actually uh, served on the ship that uh, I'll be painting as the primary focal point of this painting. So it was a, a fun uh, commission project. Now I've let that um, background color dry and I'm just dry brushing on um, a little bit of gray. I've mixed this gray with uh, a little bit of ultramarine blue and dioxazine purple and a little bit of um, burnt umber as well. And I'm mixing in little shades um, of black uh, as well. I'm trying to create just kind of a bit of maybe a storm cloud here, a thunderhead of some sort that uh, is just kind of moving in over the ocean. And I'm using a filbert brush. I find that the filbert brushes are really awesome brushes for doing this type of uh, dry brush blending technique. Um, and anybody who's ever worked with acrylic uh, knows that it dries so quickly um, that oftentimes most of your blending is uh, going to be done through a dry brush technique. So I find that filbert brushes uh, have, have a really nice perfect head, nice and soft, and um, I can get some really good transitional blending that way. So I'm just coming back and adding various shades um, of light purples and some of those gold colors and kind of creating a little bit of movement and form into these clouds. Now I've got a smaller filbert brush that I've switched to now and uh, I wanted to have a little bit more control um, to go in here now and kind of start to create a little bit of just a little more shape around the object. Um, <clears throat> try to create a little bit of three-dimensionality here and just make sure that my my edges are nice and soft. And that's really all I'm trying to accomplish at this point in time. But just adding a little bit more uh, definition and detail uh, here in these clouds. And a lot of this will also be covered up. I, I'm going to be putting a large boulder uh, here in the front. So um, I'm just kind of trying to figure out right now where that, that's going to all live. So using um, I'm just using black gesso here. I find that uh, I like using the black gesso. It's got a good pigment to it. It's, it dries quickly as well. So now I can come back through here with my chalk pencil and I can start to outline where I think those rocks are all going to live. Now here in the far background we're going to be adding in some, just adding some land formations here way in the distance. And I'm using uh, a really light uh, purple and gray mixture. Uh, it's, it's just oxazine purple with some umber um, to create that kind of that grayish, that grayish color. And I want these to really look like they're far off in the distance. So um, just going back with some of that gold color and I'm kind of just skipping around and kind of creating a little bit uh, of some formations in the rocks where we're going to have the sun sort of low in the horizon, 
kind of hitting some of these peaks here. So you want to jump around, you want to use your negative space, and you certainly don't want to kill all of that underpainting there. Um, and that's what's going to really help it to, to really work out well. Now you see me going back from time to time and using my blow dryer. I like to do that. I like to, at certain times, really speed up that, that uh, drawing process. That's all I'm doing there. So I've added a little bit of a lighthouse in the background, um, as you can see. And um, now just going back with my, my small little round brush to kind of create a little bit of choppiness in the waves now. And trying to determine what the shapes are initially going to be kind of looking like as we start to move into uh, painting the ocean. So I've gone and, and outlined a rough sketch of, of our boat. And, um, and I'm kind of starting with just a, a basic gray color. My, my go-to gray mixture is usually ultramarine blue and uh, burnt umber or burnt sienna. Um, with a little white and I can change the value using some titanium white as well. So um, I'm using a reference photo. Um, the client was kind enough to send me some reference photos um, of this ship um, and so I've got a nice reference photo I'm using here and I'm just kind of using that as my guide here uh, but I want to first kind of silhouette this entire ship out with some of these gray colors. Um, this is gonna kind of be in the mid the mid ground, so we still don't wanna go really dark with this. We still wanna keep it fairly, uh, a fairly dark gray color, just to give it that illusion that it is, it's still kind of in the distance. And you'll see me go back from time to time and use my acrylic paint pen. I've talked about these paint pens in, in past videos, but, uh, I recently discovered them, and and they uh, they're just acrylic paint, but they have a nice kind of a almost like a, a, a pen sort of a head to them that that the the uh, paint will flow out onto, and you can get some really nice straight lines. So I, I enjoy using that quite a bit now, and get some really good control, um, which which you can still achieve with a rigger brush, but. Uh, I've been using these pins a lot more recently, so. Um, all right, so I, I've now come through and add a little bit more of um, a bit of a guide here and, and added a few more chalk um, outlines so that I can kind of know where I'm, I'm going with the ship here. But since our light is coming from the right side of the canvas, um, and it's also meant to be fairly low into the horizon, I'm just trying to Kind of create um, some shadowing effect um, as if that that low setting sun is kind of hitting this ship now. So um, I'm, I'm really kind of trying to keep this fairly dark. It's obviously most of the ship is facing away from the sun so we don't need to add a whole lot of, of bright colors here but just keep it fairly muted. Um, and, and try to add that in here so we can give that illusion that um, this is going to be mostly in shadow on this side of the ship. So it, it was, um, <clears throat> you know, it was, it was a fun project. Uh, I don't do a lot of naval ships or military ships, in this case a Coast Guard ship, but um, it's a good, it was a nice project to have and a good challenge uh, as well. But this is kind of the way I like to put these types of things together. I, you know, you want to use a lot of that, a lot of that underpainting is going to serve you very well and you don't want to cover it all up. So um, I'm using that really that dry brush blending technique. I don't have a lot of paint on the brush and I'm really allowing a lot of that underpainting to, to kind of come through here. And now it's just a matter of kind of adding some of the final details here. There was a lot of flags on the ship. Um, I'll go back and add some lighting a little bit later on, but now I'm just kind of starting to work on the first crashing wave. And um, I've mixed together a, a little bit of a, a gray color with that umber and blue mixture. And then I can go back with a little bit of 
of white and yellow and kind of change the value a little bit, kind of lighten it up a little bit more. But having that nice dark um, underpainting will will really help to, as I bring out some of the the detail in the crashing wave, uh, again, you're gonna let a lot of that underpainting show through to accomplish that. So I'm kind of working here, there's gonna be a bit of an eye uh, inside this crashing wave as if some of the, some of that low setting sunlight is kind of reflecting through um, the, the crashing wave. So there's a little bit of translucence there. And just trying to work all this out and figure out, um, you know, what the shape is going to look like. Now this will be crashing into the large boulder here in the front. So you, you want to make sure that you're working this in first. Um, it's much easier just to work everything from the background and then kind of move forward uh, with the painting. So I'm always kind of trying to think about uh, the best ways in which I can create certain forms and then overlay other forms on top of those without having to really paint around objects too much. It's just kind of my preferred method for doing that. But I'm um, going to use this small round brush. This, this little brush is really handy. I use it quite a bit. It's a 20 over 0 brush um, is, is the size of head on this brush. It's a really fine little point and I'm going to use that to create a lot of um, control with my brush and create that detail. So I'm just dry brush scumbling um, some more highlight here. I'm using a, a really pale purple that I've mixed, which is my my blue little dioxazine purple, a little uh, burnt sienna. Um, and I don't have a lot of paint on the brush here. I'm using my filbert brush. I'm not applying too much paint. I really want a lot of that dark black gesso to show through. Um, and, and just dry brush this on here. So I'm really kind of scrubbing this onto the canvas. And I wanted to get this kind of purplish color as if we um, are creating kind of a reflection from the sky. We have got a lot of purple and a lot of gold colors in the sky to kind of give it that impression that this is kind of going on evening time, the sun is starting to set, and just kind of create that, that more dark and subtle mood that it's a little bit later in the day. And I wanted to get some of those purples mixed into the water uh, as if we're having that reflection now. So I'm just kind of going through here, working around the stones that I've drawn out because I, I want this to be crashing around the stones. So I'm just continuing to kind of just lay out and get a basic idea of, of where the objects are going to live in the painting and where the water is going to be. We're going to have a lot of movement in this water. We're going to have a lot of, of crashing and breaking uh, waves and splashes. Um, so, so I'm just really kind of trying to create some movement right now and, and, and accomplish that with my filbert. So I'm going back and using more black gesso here to block in my, my initial stones and kind of get those worked in here um, so I have an, a basic idea about where I want those to be. And then I can start to work my water around that. I'm using a smaller brush so that I can really create some nice fine detail around the object as if we've got a lot of crevices and, and really kind of rugged, sharp angles uh, to the stone here. So I've mixed here uh, really using a little bit of um, doxazine purple, but more burnt sienna. I wanted to create my stones more kind of on the uh, reddish side. Sienna is a nice brown color that has a lot of red in it. So I'll be going back and using quite a bit of sienna. Now I'm going on the, I'm creating kind of a, a uh, reflected shadow here and I'm using ultramarine blue and a little bit of titanium white uh, on the left side of the stone just to kind of create that reflective shadowing. Um, it's gonna be a cooler color. It's facing away from the sun. And then my siennas are going to be really that which is facing more into the sun. 
Now I'm going through with my sienna and I'm just adding a little bit of other colors. I'm adding a little purple, adding a little bit of blue, um, adding a little bit of oranges and yellows as I kind of go because I want to kind of create a lot of different color varieties into the stone and you want to really skip around. Uh, it's really important to allow the underpainting to be your friend and to really work in your favor here. So um, there's going to be a lot of shadows. It's a very dark, subtle painting. Um, so don't kill that. Make sure you keep that. But you want to really skip around a lot and think about negative space and how you can utilize that. And then just going and creating that illusion that there's a lot of jagged stones here. There's um, a lot of boulders, um, a lot of crevices and cracks. Now I'm coming back through and I'm starting to just slowly change my value and lighten things up. I'm still using my umber, but I'm actually introducing a little bit more of uh, alizarin crimson and a little bit of phthalo red um, into that color as well. And really starting to slowly bring in a little more detail, a little more highlight, but you want to use it subtly. You don't need to just murder the rock with a bunch of highlight. Uh, really look at how can you be subtle with your colors and have subtle transitions. Um, keep it soft and and we still want to keep it rather muted. Uh, and, and that's really what I felt like helped to, to make this really work. So I'm coming through and I'm just kind of thinking about shape. I'm thinking about forms. And I want to get all this kind of worked in because I'll go back and really start to bring in that wave around these stones and really start to make it um, just a lot of movement and a lot of a lot of um, character as we as we really start to work the uh, crashing uh, water up and around this. So I'm going back with my filbert brush and I'm starting to dry brush blend more of that doxazine purple, uh, that lighter doxazine purple with the umber and with the titanium white and really starting to kind of work that in and around the the base of these stones. Starting to think about foam and there's going to be mist um, and so I just want to bring all that in here and I keep blow drying it so I can get it to dry a little quicker even though it will dry pretty fast it will take a few minutes to dry. Um, I just want to keep working and and so I'm, I'm, I'm drying that a lot quicker. And then I, I can slowly come back now and you just want to very subtly start to change your values here and create more movement, create some highlights. I'm actually kind of trying to create um, a lot of running water as if you can see it sort of hitting the rock and then trickling down back into the ocean. And so I'm kind of using some lines in those angles and making sure I'm, I'm properly angling the uh, those lines back as if it's the flow of water and, and so I'm trying to really think how would the water look as it's flowing up and down these rocks and using my my little uh, liner brush here I can kind of create some water that's sort of seeping through the cracks um, in the stone and that's really all I'm kind of working on, but I'm still kind of keeping it with the purples and the blues, a little bit of titanium white uh, with some, a little bit of phthalo yellow. I want to make sure that my, my whites are not pure white, but I'm mixing a little bit of yellow uh, into that white so that it's, it's kind of tinted a little bit. It's got a little bit of a yellow tint to it. And um, I'll go back later on and really use uh, a little bit of white uh, to really bring out some of that. So I'm using uh, a little fan brush just to kind of create a little bit of of movement here with this as well. Uh, these different brushes can kind of provide different effects that I'm looking for and I kind of want to create um, just just some other sort of shapes that I can I can really use uh, through the water here that's that's crashing into the into the boulder. Now I'm kind of going back here and I'm starting to cap some of my some of my waves. It's going to be very choppy and and so I'm I'm not creating. I'm really just kind of making jagged 
jagged lines. Nothing is really a solid line. It's just kind of, I'm kind of spacing it. I'm kind of jumping around here and, and just kind of keeping it uh, flowing smoothly. And then I can continue to build out uh, our, our waves here, um, scumbling on some of the darker grayish undertones and then going back with some lighter values and kind of capping those off a little bit and, and uh, allowing a lot of the underpainting to come through as I'm, as, as I'm working on this. So it's, um, you know, it's a lot of work, but um, it's not nearly as challenging as, as it might initially appear. Um, if just kind of keeping in mind a couple of those little helpful tips about, about oceans. I know that uh, some folks don't really like painting oceans. They're not quite as is easy to achieve but I think initially as you first kind of figure out where you want the shape of the wave um, how the water is going to kind of break in certain sections and then really utilize a lot of your underpainting and you just work on top of that it's going to make your job a lot easier because 80% of your ocean is really just a lot of the prep work. It's a lot of the underpainting that you put in there and then everything else on top of that is you start to cap off certain waves and, and as you start to kind of form some lines and some choppiness, that's kind of what will, will help you to, to really achieve a, a pretty effective um, oceanscape. So I'm right now just using my smaller brushes and I'm kind of figuring out where some of the choppiness and some of the other uh, smaller waves are initially going to appear and then I can then go back and I can kind of fill in with additional um, lines that would sort of uh, simulate uh, other, other movement uh, and other little, little waves in, in the water. So I'm going back now with some darker gray which I've mixed with my blue and my umber um, and and I'm kind of just trying to create bring in a little bit of shadowing is what I'm doing and I'm kind of trying to make sure I'm keeping it sort of in the shape and form of a wave uh, so I'm, I'm just kind of blocking that in figuring out okay here's where I believe I'm going to have some shadowing some of the rock shadowing is going to kind of reflect into the water uh, somewhat. It's going to it's going to be distorted, of course, a little bit. Now it's just kind of jumping back and forth, and I can come in with with other lighter values of that gray and that blue, and I can start to really form a lot of the the waves. But keeping in mind that I'm not trying to kill that underpainting. I want some of those purples and those golds to still show through on the underpainting. So I'm kind of jumping around here, but I'm, I'm still kind of creating that, that kind of choppiness into the water, some individual uh, little, little breaks and, and little um, waves that, that I want to kind of have as if they're kind of reflecting a bit of the color of the water here and, I'm, and I've gone into uh, a little turquoise now so I'm using some turquoise and I'm mixing that into my gray mixtures and my purples a little bit and I'm just kind of now going and jumping back and forth and the water's finally starting to really kind of take on a little bit of life here um, and now I'm, I'm going back and capping a lot of this now I, I want to have certain areas of the water that that are really reflecting some light and and you can really kind of achieve that with capping uh, your waves and I'm and again I'm using titanium white and phthalo yellow are my two colors here uh, to create that kind of that creamy um, kind of an off-white color now I'm going back and kind of uh, creating some translucence here um, dry brush blending on a little bit more of my gold colors and uh, I want to have that sort of piercing through the eye of, of the uh, crashing wave. That's what I'm trying to accomplish. So continue on through here, just capping these waves, creating uh, some, some more variety and some more movement, going and using that, uh, that turquoise now a little bit more. 
I want to not only reflect the colors in the sky, but the water has sort of its own turquoise color to it as well, and I wanted to make sure that I was demonstrating that into the painting. And then I'm going back into my darker gray mixtures and kind of bringing in, again, some more shadowing. Um, with water, it always has a variety of colors, and I think as you do your oceanscapes, as you introduce just a lot of different colors, uh, that's what creates a lot of interest and, and uh, makes makes a, a really a pretty color. Um, the ocean doesn't have to be uh, the stereotypical blue or green. Um, it can be a variety of colors. It's going to be reflecting the sky and the clouds. It's going to be reflecting uh, the stones, if there are stones into it. Um, and so it's really going to take on uh, the colors that are in the atmosphere around it. And so you can really have a lot of fun as you uh, introduce a lot of different color varieties. And I think it makes for a, a much nicer painting. So I'm starting to kind of create some more breaking here using my yellows and whites and uh, starting to create uh, a little bit of, of action uh, here in the corner, uh, it's going to start to churn. I want to have kind of that choppy churning sort of water where it's been breaking against uh, these boulders and um, and it's really kind of violent. It's, it's kind of a violent um, ocean. It's, it's not peaceful right now um, as, as the ship is kind of rolling into uh, to shore. It's getting close to land now. And so uh, there's always going to be a lot of action and movement. So I'm going back into my purples now and, and I'm capping with purple because I want this to be more in the shadow region. And you can create that illusion uh, by using your cooler colors. And I want to make sure that everything off to the lower right hand corner is much more in shadow. Um, you've got these large boulders here that are uh, really casting some dark shadowing and so the sun is not able to penetrate that area and so with anything when it comes to shadowing you want to definitely use a lot of cool colors your blues and your purples um, some grays gray tones uh, those are all going to be really handy to create that that sort of shadowy technique now it's really a, a good um, lesson in contrast here because I want to have the, the sun kind of piercing between the stones and uh, so keeping everything fairly fairly light uh, in that region using warmer colors. So I'm using my whites, using my yellows, my oranges, uh, keeping it much warmer and that will kind of fool the eye uh, to distinguish between our lights and darks, our highlights and our shadows. So I'm just kind of creating some basic movement in the stones here. I don't need a, as, nearly as much detail on the stones. It's going to be a lot more in shadow uh, here on, on the cooler side of the painting. So I'm, I'm using a lot of reflective light, using um, more of my purples and my blues, and then just bringing in just a subtle hint of some, some burnt sienna. Uh, here at the at the top uh, of these stones as if a little bit of that sunlight sort of kind of hitting the top of those stones. But it's just jumping around. It's creating a lot of movement um, and, and they're just kind of layering. You know, it's just a process uh, that you go through. So um, just kind of layering the colors here and, and just trying to give that illusion of a lot of movement in the water and um, we're kind of coming close to the end of this video now this is kind of how I put together uh, a painting I'm adding some birds right now um, but uh, this is how I put together an, an oceanscape and I'm using some of my um, gesso some thick gesso now because I want to go through with pure white and gesso is nice and thick and it's got a lot of good pigment so I'm just kind of adding this on really nice and thick, adding some kind of twinkles, uh, some, and I've actually switched to oils at this time. I've switched to oils to add a little bit more color and a little bit more vibrancy, and I'm just using it more to um, 
really just kind of define some final things. So I appreciate you uh, tuning into this video. I hope it's been helpful. And uh, if you've not done Oceanscapes, give it a try. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, please subscribe, and I'll look uh, forward to sharing another video here real soon. Until next time, thanks so much. Bye now.